I was in the ninth grade when I had my child, when I got pregnant. They took me out of school. And I had to sit down for that whole run. Two years, I was not able to come back to school. When I came back to school, Ebola business came. And that whole year, Ebola spoiled the whole school year. And this year again, I'm staying in ninth grade instead of being in 12th grade. I want to get out of high school, graduate and go to college to become somebody, not to be like my parents tomorrow. You want to graduate from other high school or other college before having a kid or a child. The best thing you can do is what? I use what? Contraceptive, right? Before them I came, there was no sex education, there was no health education. You find that everyone was just living the traditional way. The reason why me and this program is for to save your future as no person coming up. This club is used to carry on education in the community, in other villages, in the school, among the, the little ones, so that they can be safe for the future. James helped me to get on my contraceptive to protect myself, and I was able to understand here and today I think I am blessed because as long as I understand, I won't make a mistake in my life again. For 14 years, from 1989 to 2003, the West African nation of Liberia endured civil war and now it faces significant development challenges. Only 15% of youth graduate high school, and almost a third of young people are unemployed. The area of reproductive health is particularly problematic. The birth rate is almost five babies per woman, and one in 100 mothers will die in childbirth. Meanwhile, over 30% of Liberian women have no access to family planning services that would help them control their pregnancies and prevent disease. In the most remote communities, family planning items like birth control and condoms are often out of stock, and pharmacists, clinic staff and health educators are also in short supply. This was a situation that required human resources. So we work with UNFPA and the Ministry of Health you know, su Supplies Chains Unit. And we all came up with the idea of you know, uh, sending volunteers, young people in the field, to help us solve this, this, this problem. OK, this morning we'll be talking on family planning. Can anyone tell me what they know about family planning this morning? 50 young men and women were chosen to be part of an inaugural corps of reproductive health youth volunteers. I want to do this job in order to help to reduce the teenage pregnancy in our country and to make sure every breath is important as well. Before going into the field, the volunteers received training on health education and service provision, as well as in supply chain management. They committed to serve for at least one year in health clinics and drug warehouses in the five Liberian counties most in need. When a client comes at the facility there, we give them health talk on the prevention of STIs. We talk on HIV and AIDS, the different infections, how they get in contact with them. And we're still talking on Ebola because we are not, we can't say we are 100% free yet. We still give uh, 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 lectures on Ebola prevention. And we also tell them how to prevent pregnancies. You will not have pregnancy and you will not have ST and sexually transmitted diseases. So you see how safe the condom is? It's better. And then? If you tell the devil, the devil is going to stop you from getting pregnant. It will not prevent you from getting sick. Those sexual diseases will not prevent, prevent you. But if you take the devil, on the other hand, you use the condom. You are saving yourself from sickness. If I take in a depot and I start to bleed, what can I do? What's all the depot I came on to you, eh? Go back there. Tell the people say I took the depot, but my flow can't stop. When I talk to them in that manner, I think they will listen more than an older person talking to them. So I can talk to them like friend to friend talking to friend, that they will be able to listen to me. The time I came here, I meant lucky. 
I explain to her. She said, oh, you have to take your family planning to space your children. And I went to my husband and told me that, no way. But I be there, I came to say it's lucky, say, for, for her to help me. She said, why you have to give my wife family planning? Why? I said, oh, because she told me that she wanted the family planning. And I gave it to her. No, you ain't supposed to give. I didn't tell you I, 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 I don't able to support my children. So I tried to convince him, talk to him. You know, I started explaining how family planning does. And, how to, and now he accepted it. And she always coming for her. Even sometimes she forgets. I will go to her, face her. Oh, you have to so so time. You know you have to come back in to take your drugs. The volunteers' deep engagement in their communities means that clients trust them walk, 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 with walk, their walk. most intimate questions and concerns. How you doing, your family people? I provide to do, do awareness for the residents of the community on how to plan their family and encourage them to come to the clinic to get the reproductive commodities. This year, I born cha. Then I start taking family planning. Yeah. Two to three years. Yeah. Then I want born in another child. Yeah. When I stop taking the family planning, yeah. it will say be good for me to get pregnant soon. Yeah. So when you're ready to have the child, you go back to the clinic, to the nurses, then they will explain properly to you about how to uh, yeah. start the family planning and have the second child. Yeah. I feel I'm rendering a uh, service for my people. Uh, they, I'm, what I'm doing is helping the people. They are benefiting from it, so I feel good doing it. Well, you, the question is that can man protect himself? Yes. 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 So how can man protect himself? Uh, By using condom. So we talk about family planning. We talk about how to protect ourselves from unwanted pregnancies, teenage pregnancies, so that we may be able to go ahead with our education. Sexually transmitted infection. So who, who can tell me what are some of the infections that you acquired from having unprotected sex? Children are being educated of how to protect themselves, and the parents also are welcoming the, the, the children and the idea of taking family planning. I never knew that I could have made any impact in anybody, anyone's life, but with this program, I think I have made a very huge and a significant one. James launched and runs the health club in Jackie's school on his own initiative, in addition to his other volunteer responsibilities. In the year before the club started meeting, there were at least five pregnancies among schoolgirls. In the year since, there has been only one. When I started here, one of the commodities we call the Depot Provera, they were out of stock for a very long time. Yes, so that chain of, you know, it was broken. Now we have two persons stationed at NDS where we send our request. So I'm here and I'm going low on the supply. I've sent in my request. Then I just call my colleague there. Oh, and brother, my request is there. Can you please follow up on it so that I get it on time? You know, so that there will be no... From the time we started this program, actually, as you admit, there have not been any shortage of commodities here. Two years here, they have not been shortage of it. This is the country's national depot. This is where all commodities it, that is brought in from other countries is stored and is distributed from this point to the facilities. I'm here to monitor. We put on basic reproductive health stock level. Yeah, this is funny. Behind the scenes, youth volunteers make sure that reproductive health supplies get to the women and girls who need them. We actually make sure that these commodities get to the depot, from the depot to the facility, and then we, we track file it by going on the field to monitor and to know as to whether it has reached our end users. And our end users are the patients who take those commodities in. This is the dispensary tree where we have the medication that we give up to the patients. The condom. We dispense to everybody. This is the microgranner, the tablet. We want to call it for the cycle. One cycle for each month. 
This is a devil, a three months injection. The Jadel. This is the five years. The one got five years. The Jadel. We put in the arm too. We need a little more to prevent pregnancy. But if you want to help to prevent sexual illnesses. We need the volunteers because the Ministry of Health staff at the facilities, especially at the facility level, are not adequate enough, you know, and the workload is very huge. So at every level, we need those people, you know, if we want, we want to make sure that contraceptive and cover commodities always be available, you know, whenever the patient comes. We are quite indebted to the youth for the role they play. They were quite responsive to our call to provide those vital health services that uh, we believe uh, will improve the lives of women and girls in this country. Young people are total assets by their very age. Just by being young, they're already an asset. The energy level, innovation level, the creativity, all the things around them. They're actually having conversations that are changing lives, changing communities, you know. They're giving women new hope. What I would like to see for the future of this program is a skill up of this program. And to have other stakeholders join us in expanding this program throughout the country, beyond those five counties. And by so doing, we will ensure that we have universal access to reproductive health services throughout Liberia. It is not easy to get here most especially for no catchment times to reach here. Some area is three hours, four hours. People walk from there to this place to come for help service. The distance is too far. Like I walked from there one time, went to another village back so about eight hours. We could not come back, I have to sleep in the forest. The cell phone reception here is bad. Before you can even access Lone Star Network here, you must put your phone on a stick to get somebody to talk to. Sometimes you talk, not even a minute, they will call the, the network. Hello. The work is not really easy, but sometimes when you, when, you, when, you, when you volunteer to do something, with all the challenges, you sometimes do it with passion because you have volunteered to do it. Now I'm working, I'm dealing with these people. I'm giving them services. And somebody coming back to say, oh, thank you very much for what you did. It pleases me so much. That means my work is not in vain. That means I'm helping somebody out there. That means I'm saving a life out there. Well, it's the national service I'm giving to my country. I love doing this job to serve my country. In a country where over 40% of the population is under 29, the Reproductive Health Volunteer Program is a model for fulfilling the next generation's potential. Since 2013, when the program began, the volunteers have made a tangible impact on their communities, and they will continue to do so for as long as they are called to serve. 